Well, hi there. I'm here today with one of the neatest animals in the world, and that is the Asian water monitor. And this little girl here is actually pretty small. But the Asian water monitor is one of the biggest lizards in the entire world, which is pretty awesome. They're also absolutely the puppy of the reptile world. You will probably notice that this girl is just going to explore and try to climb on me for this whole video. And I have these gloves on, not because she's going to try to hurt me, but because these claws of hers can do the job even when she's not trying. So we might discover here in just a moment. But I love Asian water monitors. For starters, they're really, really pretty. I think one of the prettiest of the monitors I mean, of course, you've got some things like the, the blue and green tree monitors, which are just ridiculous. And, and there are some beautiful Australian monitors. A lot of, there are a lot of pretty monitors, but the Asian water monitor is right up there with any of them. They're all so smart, so smart. Monitor lizards, probably more than any other lizard, just radiate intelligence when you're around them. There are a lot of other lizards that as you observe them for a long time, you know, you start to notice what intelligent behaviors they're showing. But monitors in general, and maybe especially the Asian water monitor, the way that they interact with their world, the way that they interact with you, the way that they look at you and explore, you can just tell there's a lot going on there. I would say honestly, when you just sort of look into their eyes and and the way that they're they're looking at things, it, it reminds me a lot of the corvids, which are a, a big group of birds like crows and magpies, which are some of the smartest birds on the planet. You know, you can just see that intelligence in their eyes, and monitors have that, and Asian water monitors have it in spades. But they are funny. They are funny. They're absolutely puppies. As I already mentioned, they're very, very inquisitive. Uh, it's one of the great features and kind of one of the pains in the neck about the Asian water monitor is they are almost always exploring and getting themselves into any mischief they can find. And as a result, they are a bit of a handful. I mean, this is a big, smart, inquisitive goofball of a lizard and ah, with nasty claws, and that is a handful, even at this size, especially when they get to be fully grown. Quite frankly, I mean, there are so many reasons why an Asian water monitor is one of the neatest pets you could possibly have and why it might be in many ways just a perfect pet lizard. But there are certainly a heck of a lot of reasons why it is not the right pet lizard for most people. And so the big question that we wanna to tackle today is, is the Asian water monitor the right pet reptile for you? To help you sort that out, we are going to score the Asian water monitor based on our five categories, which are handleability, care, hardiness, availability, and upfront costs. When it comes to handleability, and my gloves will probably indicate this to some degree, we give the Asian water monitor a score of two out of five. For a lizard that gets as big as do Asian water monitors, and for a lizard that can hurt you so badly without even wanting to hurt you, a two out of five is a pretty spectacular score. You goofball. <laughs> you are such a goofball. And that does hurt. Honestly, if these guys were the size of an Aki monitor, they would get a better score than do Aki monitors. But they are not the size of an Aki monitor. Not at all. They're actually the size of a Velociraptor. Sometimes even larger than that. So that is not the size of an Aki monitor by any means. They will at some point, if you have them, whip you with this tail. And uh, that hurts, but it's not that big of a deal. A nice thing about them when it comes to handling is that they can't drop this tail. And I find that lovely. It's one of the great things about monitors in general is they don't drop their tail, so you can actually use it 
as a leash to control them if you need to. Sometimes that does come in very handy actually. As I mentioned though, being whipped by the tail, as much as that may sting, is the least of your concerns when handling an Asian water monitor. A much, much, much more frightening thing that they have is their bite because their teeth are nasty and their neck is long and flexible. Uh, tegus, for example, have big nasty teeth and a very, very powerful set of jaws, but their neck is very rigid. And so if you're holding them right, even though they might open their mouth and be cranky, they're not going to be able to just spin around and bite you. That is not the case with an Asian water monitor, kind of like a snake. You could be holding it back around its arms and it could just turn its head around and grab you. And that's no good. But these guys tend to be pretty sweet. So if your monitor is used to handling, that probably won't ever happen to you. At least not once it gets older. The truth is that these guys have very similar size and a very similar host of weapons to a Nile monitor, which if you've seen our video on the Nile monitor, you know is a pretty intimidating lizard. These guys have all of that. The only major difference is that these guys have the personality of a puppy. And I say puppy, uh, you know, I, I very much think that the Tegu is the perfect dog for introverts because they are sort of lovely in very dog-like ways and you can interact with them, but they're kind of like a big lazy older dog that if you really harassed it, it might snap at you, but for the most part, it just hangs out and lets you pet it. And it's just nice and laid back and low key. The Asian water monitor, though, is not like an older, low-key dog. It is like an exploring, really, really inquisitive, happy to see you all the time, wants to climb all over you puppy. And, and that's wonderful if it weren't for the nasty nails that they've got. They've got nails that are very, very good for climbing and very, very good for digging and also very, very good at shredding your skin when they climb all over you. That's why I'm wearing the gloves. It's nothing personal. They're not trying to hurt you. They just, uh, they will. Because they do want to climb all over you. They love that. You goofball. <laughs> okay. Like I've said though, generally with a lot of positive interaction, their personality is just absolutely delightful. Uh, however, if you have an Asian water monitor, even though it can be the sweetest lizard in the world, most of the time when you present yourself to the world, it will look like you just fought off a bear. No, that's just the reality. I'd also like to pause for just a moment to say thank you to our patrons at Patreon. You've maybe noticed that we always show them right before the bloopers at the end of the video, our, our stinking rad fans. And, and to thank all of our patrons, every week we put out an additional video called Patreon Extras, which is full of just a lot of really rad stuff that wasn't part of our main video. You know, our main video, uh, we, we talk about our five categories and review them as an animal, but a lot of times we end up having discussions about a lot of other really cool facts about them. And sometimes we have even additional outtakes that don't make it into the, the main video. And so there's a lot of content left over when we're done. And we let all of our patrons enjoy that as a way of saying thank you for all that they do for us. And so if that's something that you'd like to see on a regular basis, Hop on over and, and uh, check out our Patreon, see if supporting this channel and helping us, us grow and do more amazing things like this is, is something that you'd like to be a part of. A while back, I, I was talking about how I don't like feeding snakes sometimes because uh, I don't like the startle. I, I mentioned how I don't like opening Pillsbury products. And Jason thought that meant that for our patrons at Patreon, he should do a whole video of me opening Pillsbury products. And he did that to me. And that is now a Patreon Extras video. So if that, plus other cool content, is something that you'd like to see, then maybe consider supporting us on Patreon. You know, that's just one of many things we do as our way of saying thank you for all that you do for us. And because Jason's a bad man. When it comes to care, we give the Asian water monitor a score of one out of five. It's basically the same care that you need for a Nile monitor. It's just that the monitor itself is much less likely to want you dead. The lizard is huge. Like I said, this is already a big lizard, but they get way, way bigger than this. And that means that the enclosure you need for an Asian water monitor is absolutely enormous. Literally 
at least a whole room in your house, maybe more. Inside of that room-sized enclosure, you're going to need a huge pond. And this is a pond that is gonna need to be heated and it's gonna need to be filtered really well because they're gonna make a huge mess in there all the time. They need a lot of hot basking lights and not all concentrated in one area or they tend to get burns right about here on their back. So you're gonna need a bunch of heat bulbs that distribute heat over a fairly large area. And so that's expensive and I should add on top of this that the lizard will do everything within its power to destroy those lights. It will climb up there, try to whack them and smack them and break them if it can. So you've got to lizard proof the enclosure so that it can't get to those lights. They're gonna need buckets of deep substrate, deep enough that they can dig through it and it'll hold its shape a little bit. They also are gonna eat a lot of large feeders, uh, a lot of vertebrate prey. They'll also love larger insects like, like dubia roaches. Uh, really just a wide variety of things that are either are alive or used to be alive. Whole prey, preferably. One of the things is they love to eat, and so it can be tempting to overfeed them. Uh, I, I've seen a lot of way, way, way obese water monitors, and that's not a monitor that's gonna live very long or have a very good quality of life. So you gotta be careful not to overfeed them because they do love to eat. I recommend target training a water monitor because you don't wanna be on the wrong side of a feeding response. And uh, let me know in the comments if a video on target training is something that you'd like for me to do. I've talked before about how Gus Gus is target trained and uh, you know it is a really useful thing. So let me know what you think about that. The biggest chore associated though with keeping an Asian water monitor will just be maintenance of that pond. And, you know, and this is a chore you have with something like a Nile monitor. The main difference is the Asian water monitor is probably gonna be fine with you going into the enclosure to deal with it where the Nile monitor might not be. One other thing that they're gonna do for you in that giant, fantastic, expensive enclosure that you provided for them is that they will try to destroy all of it all the time because they're constantly gonna be exploring and looking for mischief. That's just what puppy lizards do. They're busy, curious, and smart, and so you've gotta keep them occupied and you've gotta keep them safe. And that in itself is quite a chore. When it comes to hardiness, we give the Asian Water Monitor a score of three out of five. A lot of them that come in, in fact, most of them that you see will be imports, and imports suffer from import problems. We have a whole video about this. However, they are becoming more and more available captive bred. Even a lot of really cool morphs of Asian Water Monitors are available. Uh, places like Nerd, uh, New England Reptile Distributors. You know, I've always dreamed of having a lizard from them, and if I were gonna get an Asian Water Monitor, I would really, really, really be looking into getting one from Nerd. This Asian Water Monitor comes to us from Great Basin Serpentarium, which is an excellent breeder of many animals, though to my understanding, Asian Water Monitors are not one of the animals they're wanting to add to their list at this time, but they do have some really cool ones. And you should check out their website. We'll have a link to that down in our description. Like I said, especially if you get one that's captive bred, and you provide it the right enclosure, they should do really, really well for you. Uh, just make sure you keep them warm enough. That's, that's one of the main keys. When it comes to availability, we give the Asian Water Monitor a score of three out of five. These guys are honestly just about as available as Nile monitors, which we listed as being one of the most commonly available monitors there is. I would say this is probably the fourth most readily available monitor. Um, maybe the third probably the third most readily available monitor behind Savannah monitors, which make bad pets because the, we don't really know how to take care of them right. Uh, Nile monitors, because they are grumpy and huge. And then these guys. So really, the top three are all pretty bad pets. This is probably the best one, and it still can be uh, way too much for most people. You will see these at every expo you go to, at least if they're legal where you are. Uh, I think they're legal most places. You're certainly gonna be able to find them online and, and sometimes in pet shops. I have seen Asian water monitors for sale in pet shops. I just really hope that the people who got them knew what they were getting because they look so cute when they're little. Even this one's little. They get huge and destructive. 
When it comes to upfront costs, you probably can guess. These guys get a one out of five. And, and we can give a zero out of five. I mean, something could be more expensive than this, but the lizard itself is a little bit expensive. They cost more than Nile monitors. Definitely worth that extra bit of money. You know, somewhere over a hundred dollars, but pretty darn reasonable, especially considering how unreasonable the rest of this is gonna get. If the cost of an Asian water monitor is the reason that you don't wanna get an Asian water monitor, I can tell you right now, there is absolutely no way that an Asian water monitor is the right pet reptile for you. These guys, they have an amazing personality, but they are a completely unreasonable reptile to keep for the vast majority of reptile keepers. As we already mentioned, it's gonna need a room in your house at least more if you can provide it. That room needs to have several feet of substrate in it. You're gonna need to probably get that from the hardware store. It's going to need to have buckets of heat lights and then it's gonna need a giant heated and filtered pond. It's also gonna need climbing branches all over the place, big ones, because this is a huge lizard and it will be destroying that place all the time. And, you know, and even though this isn't in included in this upfront costs category, don't forget that feeding it will be extremely expensive because they're eating a lot of large vertebrate prey. And that is why we give the Asian water monitor an overall score of two out of five. Because of their unbelievably great personality, uh, they were on our, ow, oh, that hurts a lot. Told you they won't try to hurt you, but they'll do it anyway. Because of their unbelievably great personality, the Asian water monitor was on our list of the best pet monitors. But we also told you that there's only one really good pet monitor on that whole list. And this is definitely not a good pet monitor for most people. Get an Aki, right? That is, that's the winner. That is the best pet monitor that there is, full stop. The rest of them are all either a little bit worse or way, way, way worse than the Aki. This one has a personality maybe even better than the Aki and in all other ways is so much worse. However, if what you want is an absolutely enormous semi-aquatic monitor that costs an absolute fortune to keep, then this is absolutely the best one you can get. As always, like and subscribe and we hope to see you real soon. Oh, you are a good lizard. Hi. <laughs> Didn't. <laughs> you seemed uh, surprised to see me. Yeah, he's, you snuck off on it. Yeah, sorry about that. I did not mean to startle you. You want some pets on the head? You want some noggin pets? <laughs> You're so funny. I just want to climb on people. Is that so much to ask? As always. Sorry, 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 that was me. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Sorry. <laughs>